Deputy Chief Education Officer, Mrs. Joy Adamson, Senior Education Officer in the Secondary Section, and with responsibility for this celebration this evening for participants graduating in restorative practice, Ms. Patricia Warner, Senior Education Officer in Secondary in the Student Support Services Unit, Ms. K. Sargent, and Senior Psychologist, Ms. Mrs. Benita Brathwick Wharton, fellow education officers, trainers, Mr. Ken Lane, and Mrs. Julia Eady. I wish to extend a warm welcome to you this evening and say thank you for being here. I do at this point wish to extend apologies for Professor Velma Newton, who would have had oversight for the restorative practice program and the training. Unfortunately, she's unable to be with us this afternoon, but she does wish us every success and she sends her congratulations to those of you who have completed the program. It is indeed good that we can gather here and we can recognize the value of something such as restorative practice. And it is great that you all have completed this course of training. It is a tool that you can add to your toolbox of interventions and it is much needed at this time. As we undertake the, the, um, the task of guiding our young people, and sometimes our not so young people because we realize that we have problems that transcend our entire society, we will use all that is within our power to make sure that we at the Ministry of Education offer as much guidance and support as we can within our schools. And this evening is the culmination of one such effort that started approximately one year ago. I will now invite Ms. K. Sargent to bring the official welcome to this evening's proceedings. Ms. Sargent, please come. Thank you, Mrs. Griffith Willoughby. My task is to welcome you officially to the Ministry of Education, S Technological and Vocational Training. A particular welcome to our two trainers who participated um, in the training sessions, Mrs. Edie and uh, Mr. Lane. We welcome you. I extend the welcome to uh, our social workers, well, kind of a welcome to this room, to this event. <laughs> um, our safety officers as well, those of you who are here with us, as well as our school counselors. Of course, Mrs. Adamson, welcome, and all other ministry staff. Please enjoy your afternoon. Thank you, Ms. Sargent. Now, a program such as this, it requires quite a great deal of input and it takes a lot of time to really achieve the outcomes that we want. And here to guide us through what restorative practice in Barbados has been like since its inception is Ms. Patricia Warner, Senior Education Officer in the Secondary Section, and she has had the oversight for the restorative practice training in our schools with our teachers and with all of the personnel who have expressed that interest and work with our students. So here to give that overview in restorative practice in Barbados is Ms. Patricia Warner. Thank you, Ms. Willoughby. But what is restorative practice? Because everybody sometimes gets it a little wrong and when you're asked what is restorative practice, I saw Rico nodding. It's hard to convince people that you are trained now in an area that will help you through dialogue to help the individual to acknowledge what is wrong or the harm that has been done. Do you remember those? Graduates, to take steps utilizing dialogue, and at times you may need intervention to repair that harm 
and improve behavior. The third one is the one I know that people find difficult. To welcome back the one who has harmed to the school community. And this entire culture of restoration produces positive relationships. So what did we do within the sector? I'm bringing some statistics to show you Barbados. There was team training for 25 principals of public and private secondary schools and 25 deputy principals of secondary schools. 30 guided counselors in primary and secondary schools. 30 education officers. We did drop the ball. We only did 15 primary and secondary school teachers at the beginning and four tutors of Erdiston Teachers College. And then we started looking I'm saying we, but it's really me and whoever. Uh, 22 educators across the system. And then I felt that there was a group that needed this training after I experienced it. I was not in the first, the second, or the, I think I was in the group, the third group of education officers being trained. And I reached out to the youth commissioners. They still keep asking when the others are going to be trained. So it's a hint to Julia and Ken who are now the lead tra traders, and 25 persons youth commissioners were trained. Some schools ask for staff training. 65 staff members of St. George Secondary School, 43 staff members of Grantley Adams, and Mr. Lane said everybody at Darrell Jordan so 60 persons from Darrell Jordan benefited from the training. Congratulations, Mr. Dade, and it was an excellent training. But there's another level after this level, and I want to promote it to some of you. There's a level called restorative conferencing, and that's the level that is used within the court system or in really out of court, but it may be in the community centers for practice. And of that group, there are four Erdiston teachers, college tutors who were trained. It was Ken as the deputy principal, the director of New Horizons Academy at the time, Miss Colleen, Jill Cullimore, Julia, the guidance counselor, and myself as a senior education officer. So I started getting recognized. And then there were three trainers chosen from Barbados. And I really want to acknowledge Mrs. Julia Eady and Mr. Ken Lane. Because when I dropped the baton, they took it up. And they continued to do training, not only within the educational sector, but also to external Actually, at present, Ms. Julia is with GIS doing some training. We've set up a relationship with the Erdiston Teachers College. And let me say a lot of the work was done by us, but let me acknowledge that Professor Velma Newton and her team really gave the guidance. And let me say another thing and they also had the purse. This was a Canadian government intervention, and it was not only for Barbados, it was for the entire Caribbean, as far as Belize, all the way down, and it was intended to roll out not just restorative practice in the education sector to respond to some of the difficulties we were having, but a lot of laws, new laws were drafted at the higher level, and uh, a lot of communities that were excluded were now included. So I hear them talk about the, is it Caranago persons? Yeah. Yeah. Right. And uh, some other communities that had no laws to help them. 
um, being included in the training and also how they will deal with their intervention. The project, unfortunately, has come to an end. I can't remember how much million it was, but it has come to an end. And the final reports are being submitted. And I think among those reports, Professor Newton says, is that the UWI Cave Hill will set up almost an alternative dispute resolution um, center. However, they're not sure if it's going to be for the community or for the students or how it is being done, but that is one of the outputs from the entire process. Before we used to look at um, partial certification, the three of us, we call it the three O, we do nothing before each other. Um, we now do full certification. So you can't come and ask for a course anymore for a day. That's just the beginning. And during COVID, you were one of the fortunate ones in June 2022 who switched from face-to-face -to, -face to online. And I want you to applaud yourselves because every evening I joined, I saw you making the attempt. Applaud yourselves. And for the ones that are not here, the commitment was there and it was COVID. So I knew the difficulty it would have been. We also want to thank Mrs. Edie and Mr. Lean for really sometimes calling me and telling me all these things they wanted to do for which I was grateful, but then we would have to put everything on laid. And Professor Newton, in her absence, must be thanked. She is actually engaged in a very big project for Barbados at this time. The Prime Minister has asked her to look at the constitutional reform, entire uh, um, project. And she is supposed to be on that parliamentary committee. And I think that's one of the reasons she's not here, because there is some meeting that she has to attend. And she just said she really wants to say thank you to all of you who participated. I want to say that I'm very proud of the project and what it did in Barbados. I was able to visit Saint, it was St. Vincent. They have done what we have now decided that Jen, the Erdiston Teachers College will be responsible for the training. It's a good captive audience. They're all teachers going into the school, so you train them. But it excludes in St. Vincent persons like yourself. So they have been sending and asking me, how did we do it in Barbados? I, I think I'll tell them that Ken and Julia can come up and okay. with a little... Okay. Oh, Julia can go up with her son with, yeah, once they pay and have that delivered. But theirs is mainly the teachers in training. I can't say that we've always got success because time is a big factor for the training. With Julia now retired, it has made it a lot easier for us to say, go right ahead and conduct those training sessions. But we realize there's some gaps. Parents have not been trained in restorative practice. And uh, throughout the world, if you do restorative practice only with youth, it will not, it will not bear fruit. If, if the village, the community, uh, the parent does not know how to work through the process. So now that you have been certified, I'm trusting that there are two commu committees that we've started. We have the restorative trainers Barbados, but you are now being labeled restorative champions. So I want you to take up the mantle and move with that restorative champion idea help to impact those students, your church, wherever you are, wherever you can, with some of the positives 
of restorative practice. Don't see it as a miracle wand. It will not work with some people, unfortunately. But we just want you to strive to make Barbados the best restorative community of persons that it can be. So Mrs. Edie wanted us to reflect and I'll end with a very short video. You know, science, you have this technology. Oh, they're, they're taping me. Sorry. <laughs> right. All these things that you see here, all, are really interconnected when you talk about restorative practice. Notice we didn't use the word restorative justice. Don't use that word. You're only restorative practitioners. Restorative justice is what the persons in the legal fraternity were trained in. So there's a difference, a higher level. Um, I met Madame Jackie Cornelius, and it was an informal setting. And she said, so can you link this with the juvenile court? Are you know, I told her, yes. So as long as they did Eddie Ward, hopefully we'll have a team of persons like yourself and all the others who have been trained that you can really look at it. All of those are connected. And you can't stop but see the conflict resolution, the, re the relationships, and several videos exist, which you can actually just view online on restorative practice throughout the world, especially in Canada and the USA. So here is, you see how young you can start? The circle working with some boys that working with an adult here are some of our education officers yes smaller group large group you saw somebody looking like certainly will be in the group I saw her though wanted to encourage you that as you leave it is not as difficult sometimes as it seems it is really about taking the effort and making it happen I want to say it is not a rushed process do not tell, let someone tell you that because you had a restorative meeting that all is going to be very well with the child and the parent or the teacher who has done the harm and wants to be restored, it will take time. So the way you use it in your counseling, it means that when you bring the persons back, you can also bring back the persons and try to see if we can come to an agreement. Some are very easy. I have been lobbying quietly behind the scenes. Ken and I were in Jamaica in September with the final reporting out for Barbados. And one of the things I have been trying to kind of hint, hint behind the scenes here is that we really not just need to build out in the schools the restorative justice with our money now and not because we have no money left, hint, hint, but also to look carefully at the children who maybe we have missed and teachers who need to be trained in the classroom setting to help with the restorative practice. If you look at any of those videos, the teachers do the circles every morning. It's the teacher that starts the restorative practice, making it easy for you when you're intervening to work with the student. Is it 100%? Successful, remember I said, no. But please try it as often as is possible. Try it with your children if you have children. Try it with your relatives. Try it with the neighbors. I'll tell you, I tried it with a little boy who was given lots of trouble and his mother came to me. I think the little boy benefited more than his mother because she had no interest in trying to look 
except at corporal punishment. So we do have those persons who believe that the only corrective measure is corporal punishment. I'm urging you on behalf of the Ministry of Education in particular, try to reduce the incidence of corporal punishment in the school and try instead to restore what children really need to have restored, the confidence in self, the ability to move on in life, and more importantly, the competencies that can be acquired when they learn that they can be wrong, but it can be corrected. I therefore want to thank you for embracing the training that was offered to you, and I wish you every success as you even try to do maybe one area of restorative practice. Thank you. Now we know sometimes things can be a little, changed up a little differently from what we would be accustomed to. So while I say thank you to Miss Warner for carrying us so ably through the restorative practice in Barbados, know that we know what it is about, know that we know what it entails, and know that you all know the charge that has been given to you. I am going to ask Mrs. Brathwick Wharton to come and add a prayer to that so that you are strengthened as you go forward. Normally the prayer would have come at the beginning. <laughs> it would have. A little grim, gremlin interfered, but I honestly think that it interfered for a reason because we have just been taken through what restorative practice is about. And I think that you have an appreciation of the serious responsibility and what is being asked of you. As you have completed this course and this evening you come and you graduate from the course, it is more than just receiving your certificate. I know all of us have a very good understanding of all that you've been asked to do. You know, in church, they tell you about an altar call. You know, I ask her to do an altar call, but I'm going to ask her to give you a blessing and shower you with the encouragement and invite you to recognize the strength of the Almighty, who you will depend on greatly to make restorative practice work. Mrs. Bradford Wharton, please come. Would you please stand? <laughs> Almighty and most glorious Father, we come before you this evening. We thank you, Lord, for giving us an opportunity such as this that we can come together in your presence. We thank you, Lord, for all that you have done up until this point. And we know, Lord, that you're going to do wonderful things with the outcomes of what these participants would have benefited from in this program. We thank you, Lord, for your mercy, your goodness, and your grace. <clears throat> this afternoon, Lord, I bring before you the funders, the facilitators, the organizers, the trainers, the participants, and the recipients of this project. We pray, Lord, that you will have your way and that all that you have designed to come out of it will do so in no other name but the name of Jesus. Father, I especially bring the trainers before you because their job is a great, formidable one as they work not just with us in Barbados but with other persons in the Caribbean. Father, we thank you for the insight. We thank you for their will. We thank you, Lord, for their knowledge. We thank you, Lord, for the practice that they have shared with the others whom they have passed on their experience to. This afternoon, I bring before you the participants. Father, you know that you have called each and every one of these persons by name and by nature. Father, we know that you have bestowed a lot on them and we know, we know that they are going to do great works with what you have given them. We pray, Lord, that you, you would give them the strength. We pray, Lord, that you would give them the information. We pray, Lord, that you would give them 
all that it takes to make a great difference in whatever spheres they use this knowledge in, whether it be the schools, the communities, the churches, or even with colleagues. Father Lord, we pray that you will continue to bless us and keep us and guide us and protect us and that you will continue to use us to make a great big difference in our nation and by extension our world. Father, we give you praise, we give you honor, we give you glory. We love you, Lord. There's no other God like you, O great Jehovah. These things we ask in your precious son's name. Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you so much, Mrs. Bradford Wharton. And I am sure that you would agree that that prayer had great meaning as we reflected on what restorative practice means, what skills it brings to us, and what we are expected to share. So thank you ever so much. I guess in everything, sometimes things go a little awry, but it that happens for a reason. And now we move on to the distribution of certificates. I'm going to ask our Deputy Chief Education Officer for Schools, Mrs. Adamson, to assist us with the, the presentation of the certificates. Laurel Applewit. Ashley Bascom, Juliana Daniel, so Lisa Dorson, uh, she's not here, Delicia Gooding. Hmm? Okay. okay. Mrs. Adamson, I'm supposed to thank you. And I invite um, Mr. Lane to assist me. Thank you. Michelle Gooding. Shall we see her? Jacinta here. Jacinthia Haynes. Ralph Hercules. <laughs> Janice Holder. Maisha Holder. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Rashida Howell. Okay. Anne Marie Messiah. Renee Payne? Yes, she's it. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Mr. Lane. I invite Julia, Edie, Edie to Deidre Perch. Davian Phillips.
Ronald Pope. <laughs> Anton Rico. Rico Antoine. <laughs> <laughs> Laurel Springer <laughs> Melissa Walker Yes, thank you very much. I wish to say a warm thanks to Mrs. Adamson, Mr. Lane, and Mrs. Edie, along with Mrs. Brathwick Wharton, for making those presentations. And we always like a celebration when we have good things happen. And I think that your dedication to task. You're going online every evening that you were required to. I know for some of you it was a hard task, but we felt that it is a moment that is indeed worth celebrating. And we will raise our glasses in celebration and recognition of your hard work, your dedication, and of course, your <laughs> you're looking forward to helping to make us a community of restorative practitioners. Thank you. Mrs. Edie and Mr. Lane, as the persons who so ably facilitated this course, I know you must feel like proud parents of your children, and I'm gonna invite you all to come and raise the toast to the results of your hard work, please. Right. Good evening, everyone. On behalf of Julie and myself, <laughs> we are so proud um, of the fruit of our labor. You know, when we look and, you know, we, we really enjoy doing um, our training, restorative practice. We enjoy it immensely. And we like to see persons going into the communities, going into schools, and actually practicing um, restoratively. So today, it gives us great pleasure to be here in this occasion to um, have this graduation um, of sorts. And we are thankful, and we hope that you will take up the mantle and that you will share with each other, impart and empower others. So we thank you. We thank, first of all, God for enabling us to, to do this effort. And we thank um, Pat for assisting us. And every, every step that we have taken, Pat was right there with us, um, supporting us. Even if she could not make the sessions, we knew that we had, she had our back. And, you know, and she would have facilitated many sessions for us. So we are, in, we are really grateful to her. We are thankful for Impact Justice as well. Um, for making it all possible for us to do this. So to you, the graduates today, we raise this toast to you and we want to empower you and, and encourage you to practice restoratively. Here, here. Okay. Since Julie is here, she don't get away. So. I want to say it is a really great pleasure to see to be able to see all of you face to face <laughs> because I knew some people from before, but some of you I had no idea who you were. And seeing people online each evening is so different from seeing you face to face this evening. So thank you for being here. And I wish you well and 
work hard as restorative practitioners. Thank you so much, both of you. And as we go on with this evening's proceedings, we are being charged in many different ways to become effective practitioners. And we are being charged to do the best that we can. Delicia is now going to give us the charge in song and she's going to share with us, Go Light Your World. Delicia. Okay, pleasant good afternoon to all. Congratulations to us as participants. And this song is just a word of encouragement or song of encouragement to all of us. Go Light Your World. There is a candle in every soul some brightly burning some dark and cold there is a spirit who brings fire ignites a candle and makes his home carry your candle Run to the darkness, seek out the homeless, confused and torn. Hold out your candle for all to see it. Take your candle, go light your world. Frustrated brother, See how he's tried to light his own candle some other way. See now your sister, she's been robbed and lied to. Still hold a candle without a flame. So carry your candle run to the darkness seek out the hopeless confused and torn hold out your candle for all to see it take your candle and go light your world we are a family whose hearts are blazing. So let's raise our candles, light up the sky, praying to our Father. In the name of Jesus, make us a beacon in this darkest time. So carry your candle, Run to the darkness, seek out the helpless, deceived and poor. Hold out your candle for all to see it. Oh, take your candle, go light your world. I said, take your candle. And go light your So thank you so much, Delicia Goodin. I mean, I have to give her the correct name after she's given us such a wonderful rendition. And she has indeed given us the charge in song and in a way that it resonates with all of us. So thank you so much again, Delicia. All good things come to an end. And as we come to the end of this program, just this program, just this ceremony, it is of course the beginning of your restorative practice. So I invite 
Laurel Springer, one of our school counselors, to move the vote of thanks this evening. Ms. Springer. Good evening, everyone. So great to see. Oh, thank you. Excellent to see all of you lovely faces here this evening, dressed in your Sunday best. Just allow me to express some thanks for the event, as we know that for any event to be as successful as this one, there are quite a few persons who would have contributed to that. So let me start off acknowledging Mrs. Joy Adamson, our Deputy Chief Education Officer for Schools, Ms. K. Sargent, or <laughs> senior in her absence with oversight for Student Support Services Unit. We were ably led through the proceedings by Mrs. Griffith Willoughby. So thank you for your MC and skills. Of course, we want to thank Ms. Patricia Warner for her overview of restorative practices in Barbados. And as we all know, you've also played a pivotal role in championing restorative justice um, training across not only Barbados, but we're hearing you're in, in encouraging it to be spread further. So we want to continue to encourage that and do whatever you need to do to spread the candle as far as possible. We want to thank Mrs. Winita Bradford Wharton for that prayer. Lord knows we need as much prayer and support as we go to battle literally sometimes, not in a physical way, but we are out there championing a cause which includes a need for that spiritual covering. So thank you for that. We want to also thank Mrs. Eswick for your assistance with the certificates and as well, Mr. Ken Lane and Mrs. Julia Eady. And I also want to thank you for being excellent facilitators. I must say that even though every evening it was a bit of a challenge to get home and log on, it really was um, an engaging and exciting experience. And you both made it worthwhile. So thank you so very much for that. We want to thank our songbird. Mrs. Delicia Sobers Gooden, or Gooden Sobers, Sobers Gooden, <laughs> Sobers Gooden, for that charge. And may we continue to be inspired to carry our candle. I know sometimes it may seem as if the wind is blowing it out, but let's just pull in our pockets and light it again and keep going because we have a lot of work to do. I think it's also imperative that I thank Impact Justice and Professor Velma Newton in her absence as well, because obviously none of this would be possible without their funding and support. We want to thank MRD for facilitating us in this room and for your videography skills. I hope that the cameraman got of all of our good angles. So thank you as well for your photography skills, sir. And last but absolutely not least, I want to thank my colleagues and fellow participants, now graduates. <laughs> and I can say that I'm sure that we all feel charged and ready to continue. So I just want to end with a quote by Nelson Mandela that says, people respond in accordance to how you relate to them. If you approach them on the basis of violence, that's how they will react. But if you say we want peace, we want stability. We can do then a lot of things that will contribute towards the progress of our society. So as we move forward as graduates armed with the knowledge of implementing restorative practices, I hope that we will understand the pivotal role that we play in empowering our society to become more peaceful. Thank you so much.